Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us today. Our guest in studio is Dr. Dan Sperling, Medical Director of the Sperling Prostate Center, here in studio today to discuss 3T multiparametric MRI, blue laser, as it provides a very good way to gain the best available imaging when trying to detect prostate cancer. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Sperling. Thank you very much. You know, very happy to be here and uh, to have a conversation with you regarding some of this exciting new technology. It's really helping a lot of people. Uh, thank you so much for coming. And when we're talking about new technology, let's first give our listeners a little bit of taste of the, the old or, I guess, traditional technology that has been in use. And a bit of it has come under fire by the U.S. government. Yes, yes. So um, PSA, prostate-specific antigen, is in a study that's tested in the um, as a screening tools used from the, during a routine blood test to look at uh, elevations. And if there is an elevation, traditionally the urologist would do a blind biopsy approach using ultrasound. It's called the truss biopsy. Um, so that was the old way of doing things and for many, many years was the standard of care for a elevated PSA. Um, what happened was the approach had a very low yield, about 30% detection of prostate cancer, and there was a risk of infection with each biopsy that they did. There was also a risk, since the uh, ultrasound is not good at imaging the prostate, that they would miss certain uh, tumors, and uh, and then patients would go undi undiagnosed, which was obviously very dangerous. So that's how MRI uh, came into the picture as, as the new frontier and the new way of really uh, diagnosing prostate cancer uh, in, a, in a much more effective way. Now, you're talking about uh, MRI, but even above and beyond MRI, there's some new exciting MRI technology that you're here to discuss as well. Yes. So uh, MRI uh, was used for many years with the prostate, but the problem with the MRI or the old type of MRI that was used was that there was no processing done, which, it, which I'm really saying we were not able to see uh, functional aspects of the tumor. Uh, with the new multi-parametric uh, prostate MRI technology and uh, sp specifically some of the protocols we use with blue laser technology, we are able to proce process the MRI images after they are done and look at uh, tumor functionality, which means we can see cells clustering together and, and blocking flow of water molecules. We can look at uh, replacement of the normal watery tissue of the outside of the prostate with dense tumor cells. And we can see actually uh, angiogenesis or new blood vessel formation within tumors. So we really have a much more um, detailed look at the prostate gland. And once we see these areas, we can actually uh, give an estimation of how aggressive prostate tumors are, localize them properly, and then if we uh, we can go on to targeting and, and eventually biopsying these tumors in the MRI machine. In your experience, have you encountered patients who have been uh, misdiagnosed based on the old technology, and once this blue laser is implemented, you're able to catch it and still offer uh, effective care? So I've had many patients that have, uh, actually hundreds of patients at this point that I've seen that have had the blind biopsy transrectal ultrasound approach. Uh, tumors were missed, and they went through five different sessions of biopsies mm -hmm. and over 80 needles. Uh, inserted into the prostate and still no diagnosis, wow. but their PSA kept elevating to very high levels. Some guys came in with PSAs over 40, um, and a normal PSA is within the, you know, is four or elevated. Mm -hmm. about, an elevation is about four. So when I saw these uh, cases, when we did the MRI, we actually found a uh, tumor, fo uh, focus of tumor, areas of tumor in the prostate gland, and I was able to sample and biopsy these tumors in the MRI machine with just two to three samples. Mm -hmm and get a diagnosis and finally these guys could undergo treatment so it was it was really uh life-saving in many instances how cost effective is this new technology normally when when something new comes out even if it's uh extremely effective there is a period of time where it is a little bit uh less cost effective than the traditional is there uh, any difference here yes so mri is actually proven in many studies to be more cost effective than jumping right ahead, right to a biopsy after an elevated psa and that's why PSA has gotten a really bad rap. It's a good screening tool, but when you use it in conjunction with the MRI, you can actually make a decision whether or not the patient needs a biopsy. So someone may have an elevated PSA, and it could just be secondary or related to an MRI prostate gland. It could be due to inflammation or prostatitis, which many men have. 
And those, kind, those individuals, if the MRI does not show any tumor, do not need a biopsy. And there is risk with a biopsy. Uh, there's always a risk when you biopsy through the rectum, that's the way almost all biopsies are done, that you can suffer something called urosepsis, which is a severe infection, a uroseptic infection. So the uh, MRI can, can save people from undergoing unnecessary procedures and thereby protecting them from complications, with, which really takes a huge burden off the, uh, the healthcare system. Plus, uh, you may find areas of certain uh, specks of tumor that are very low grade, not aggressive, and maybe don't even need treatment. You could just watch them and do what's called active surveillance. And then those patients do not have to undergo uh, needless surgery and undergo those complications from that, those types of procedures like surgery or uh, radiation. So there are a lot of benefits, the MRI, and it really, t- it really does help the healthcare system save a lot of money. Once uh, you've identified the tumor, as you say, and sometimes finding something that can simply be monitored, once you've pinpointed it, can you rely on a a lesser technology, say go back to to monitor it now that you've identified it, makes it so that there's no more hiding it? Is that something that happens? Or once you use Blue Laser, is it best to continue to use it even for monitoring? If you're going to do monitoring, it's much better to continue with the same technology that detected the tumor. Because what happens is ultrasound, uh, even Doppler ultrasound, which actually looks at vascular flow, is inferior to MRI. With MRI, we can look at we look at actually 50 different points in time of blood flow into the prostate and create specialized curves. So we can look at flow dynamics and contrast kinetics, which you cannot see with ultrasound. So people will, will have always uh, or have people have raised that question: Can you go back to maybe an ultrasound, which is cheaper than the MRI, and see how the tumor is progressing? And you really are not getting that same uh, quality imaging, and it's tough to really uh, follow uh, tumor tissue. You want to be really careful that if a tumor does get more aggressive as you're following it, that you that you tell the person the right advice to go ahead and treat it at the right time. Um, so it's very important to stay with the, uh, the initial technology such as MRI and blue laser that have detected it. Do experts need to come into the uh, Sperling Prostate Center in order to learn about this, or do you have individuals that go to different uh, facilities for training purposes? So we, we advise most people to come in if they're, if they're able to, to come into our center, because that what I do is, which is unique, is I will sit down with people for, for people who are getting the MRI examination after it's done and go through it with them for over an hour, um, explaining to them the science, the technology behind it, and then going through their individual case, uh, which most people find very helpful in terms of going on to the next steps, whether it be uh, active surveillance, uh, treatment, some type of treatment, uh, that they found that to be very, very helpful. There are centers now that, are, and a lot of uh, centers that I have trained and supervised that are starting to provide uh, MRI examinations, and some of them are good, but we can put them in contact. People who cannot travel to us, we can put them in contact with those centers. Great. Where can our listeners get much more information about this new technology and the Sperling Prostate Center itself? Uh, I would point them towards uh, www.sperlingprostatecenter.com. That's our website. I've uh, written hundreds of articles on there regarding all areas of MRI, and uh, it really has a wealth of information uh, most people find to be very, very helpful. I thank you so much for coming in today, Dan. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in studio with Dr. Dan Sperling, Medical Director of the Sperling Prostate Center, discussing 3T multiparametric MRI blue laser technology.